The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Coming up on Harvest, our guest today knows a thing or two about adversity. The Reverend Alan Kelso offers godly wisdom for over overcoming defeat in the tough moments of life and discover how to fight fair in the Christian faith. Pastor Mark Lance jump starts a new teaching entitled, Using Your Word as the Weapon. And Brian Bush would like to pray for you in the Holy Land. Email your prayer request to life at .com. Actually, that's prayer at .com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Harvest Show. Valerie Lowe here alongside Pastor Mark Lance. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of got a little twisted about your teaching. What mm -hmm. exactly is the title of your Choosing teaching? Choosing the Word Using. as your weapon, the Word of God as the weapon. Okay, because we don't need <clears throat> to use our own words no. as a weapon. Some people we, do, Yes, but and we, we don't get need in to. trouble. Can you believe I used to do that? You know, I used <laughs> to, like, you know, just cut people sure. up with my words yeah. and just was... You know, that's how I would uh, defend myself, but you're saying not so. And we're going to give you an opportunity to elaborate on that mm. a little later on in the show. But there's mm -hmm. another weapon that we can use right. in the Christian faith, and that's fasting. Mm -hmm. I was sharing with Stefan last week that one time I went on a five or either seven day fast where mm -hmm. I had nothing but water. Mm -hmm. And when I came off the fast, I was expecting to see, I don't know, bells and whistles, right. hearing God clearly. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of disappointed. So number mm -hmm. one. Of course, I've learned since that time the purpose of fasting. But for people who are fasting leading up to Easter, mm -hmm. what's the purpose of fasting? And what can we expect spiritually sure. when the fast is over? Well, I think a lot of times we think fasting is a way that we twist the arm of God or we mm -hmm. coerce him into doing something that we want him to do. And really, that's not what fasting is. Fasting is more for you, more for me as a believer to bring my body, to bring my flesh into subjection to my spirit. You know, Paul said, I bring under my body, bring it into subjection. And so really, it's, it's something that I want the flesh to be subject to the spirit. So now I'm more spiritually a Astute, I'm more spiritually aware. And sometimes at the end of a fast, maybe even a long fast, we expect this spiritual epiphany to take yes. place, and it doesn't always happen. I mean, look at Jesus. He fasted 40 days. And when did the devil come to tempt him? Mm -hmm. At the end of his 40-day fast. That's when he fought the battle. So I think a lot of times we don't get that moment that we think we're going to have. But after then, we come off that fast. What I found after a period of time, I begin to see, you know what? I'm more spiritually aware. Mm -hmm. There's things now spiritually that I see that are stronger in my life than there were before the fast. And it didn't come in a moment, but it was a progression. And then I noticed that after a period of time. Okay. You said that we are not to manipulate God. Fasting can't be used to manipulate right. God. When's the appropriate time then to go on a fast? I mean, why should we fast? I think if you're looking if you, if you're looking for an answer from the Lord and you just spiritually don't feel like you're in the position to receive that answer. It's more for you to bring your spirit into a position where you can hear from God clearer. And many times that means just clearing the table because when you fast, everything slows down. I mean, mm -hmm. your life slows down. I feel like the days you fast are the longest days. Of course. They are, time <laughs> seems to slow down. It's because your whole system is slowing down. So it causes you to slow down. And I think you can hear the voice of God better. You spiritually can get in the word better and it causes you to be in a better position. Well, there you go. When I go on my next fast, I'll know not to expect this spiritual epiphany but to hear from God Amen. and we want to connect with you you can share your thoughts on Facebook and Twitter and at live at .com. world news begins right now With this check on world news, I'm Bob Nagel in for Chuck Freebie. Buildings in western Mosul were rocked by explosions on Tuesday as Iraqi forces continued with the offensive to oust the Islamic State group from the northern city. Large plumes of black smoke and sporadic gunfire followed the explosion in the Dawasa area. Iraqi troops have surrounded western Mosul and military leaders vow to continue the fight, saying it's only a matter of time until they crushed the last major stand of the Islamic State group in Iraq. The Islamic State group has taken to using civilians as shields as they try to escape towards Syria, where they intend to continue their destruction. 
Clashes between the Libyan National Army and the Islamic militias continued Tuesday in the 12 Buildings neighborhood in western Benghazi, the second largest city in Libya. The LNA say they managed to secure three new buildings and surrounded the armed groups and other buildings, shooting any escaping militants. The militants tried to negotiate with the LNA, offering a release of prisoners in exchange for water. That request was denied. The fighting in Benghazi has been going on since 2014. Chaos has reigned in Libya since 2011, when former dictator Muammar Gaddafi was killed. Police tore down hundreds of temporary huts on Tuesday in the Nepalese capital, where people have been living for two years since losing their homes in the 2015 earthquake. Police in riot gear used bulldozers to tear down about 440 huts in Kathmandu without providing any alternative living options. An estimated 2,000 people were living in the camp belonging to a government-owned company located near the Buddha Shrine in Kathmandu. A government administrator said the settlers had been given a month's notice of the cleanup. Thai authorities announced on Tuesday they had seized 21 rhinoceros horns smuggled from Ethiopia worth almost $5 million. The seizure came after officials at Bangkok Airport searched luggage originating from Ethiopia, accompanied by two Thai women who arrived on different flights. The women fled and escaped the airport when authorities discovered the contraband. It was the biggest seizure in 10 years, according to the police. Arrest warrants have been issued for the two suspects. Rhino horns, blood, and skin are used in traditional Chinese medicine. Illinois State Police say snowy weather conditions caused two major crashes on a Chicago expressway that involved 34 vehicles. A state police spokesman said seven people were slightly injured in the pileup on the Kennedy Expressway. More bad weather is expected on the East Coast as Storm Stella is heading to New York, New Jersey, and the eastern seaboard. A powerful nor'easter could bring as much as two feet of snow to the city of New York with wind gusts of up to 55 miles per hour. Flights have been canceled, schools are closed, and authorities are asking everyone to stay off the roads. And that's a look at world news for Tuesday, March 14, 2017. I'm Bob Nagel. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance jumpstarts a new teaching entitled Using the Word as Your Weapon. But next, Alan Kelso joins us to share his story of transformation, suspense, and hope. Harvest continues after this. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Imagine being at the pinnacle of success when suddenly it all comes crashing down. Alan Kelso is an author and speaker who has had to overcome defeat. He joins us with godly wisdom for dealing with adversity. Welcome to the Harvest Thank Show. Thank you. It's a joy to be here this morning. The Reverend Alan Kelso, I mean, things are looking up for you, going great, but there was a time when you had to deal with some real adversity in your life beginning with your own birth. Take yeah. us back to that time. Well, within the book, I actually give it a full overview all the way back to my birth whenever I was being born back in the day. Uh, having an RH negative factor and a positive factor was not a big deal today, but it was then. And so um, right at the very beginning of my life, it was about to end. And um, it was, the church was praying. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. It was a Wednesday night. And uh, I had at that point, a, a, a situation happening in my life where it seemed like all of a sudden I was in another place. Uh, I was actually at a, in, in an arms of an angel overseeing uh, a congregation and seeing them praying. And, the, and he spoke to me and said, these people will always be praying for mm -hmm. you. 
And then suddenly I was born and, and what they thought they were going to have to give me a transfusion, but they didn't. God just miraculously interceded in that moment as people were praying. But that never left your heart nor your mind because you go on to talk about the power of prayer and how God um, has used prayer to take you out of many situations. Talk a little bit about the importance of prayer because sometimes I think when we're going through situations, we don't realize that's our first weapon of defense. You know, I went through a situation at one point where I thought that my life was just absolutely falling apart. The Spirit of God had given me that promise that there would always be someone praying for me. And um, I actually turned and went back to the home place, my home roots, never told anybody I was coming. And while I was there, my whole purpose was I want to know that someone is praying for me. And I hadn't been in the home for an hour. And a family member who had been at that church praying for me when I was born, came by that day and said, I want you to know, I just came by to see you. God told me you'd be here. And I came to pray for you. I want you to know that I have never ceased praying for you. Prayer is so vital that we have to pray for someone. And the Spirit of God so often in our lives will speak to us about praying for someone or sometimes just the Spirit of God comes over us and we have an unction to pray. I'll never forget my grandmother was awakened in the middle of the night. She had had a vision of my dad in a casket and the, and the Lord said to her, do you recognize who that is? And she said, well, that's Marley. And he said, if you don't pray, this will be a reality. And she got out of her bed and got on her knees and began to pray and intercede. And she stayed there until the Spirit of God spoke to her and said, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. You see, God speaks to us in times we have no idea of it to pray for people and to mm -hmm. intercede in situations that changes the balance of what's going on. There's a war that's happening in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happens, if you've got 1,000 angels on one side that are God's angels, and you've got 1,000 angels that are fallen angels on the other side, they're equal in power. Mm -hmm. So what is it that causes the difference? And it's prayer. Mm -hmm. It's as we stand in the gap and intercede in a situation, either knowingly or unknowingly what it's about, and change takes place. It causes for God, the angels, to be able to make a difference and move. And that's, that's what awesome. happens. So the book you've written is entitled, I Will Not Be Defined. What is it that drove you, compelled you, to cause that to be the title of your book? I really struggled over the title. I, it took me probably three or four months to be able to come up with a title. I, I knew what I wanted to say. I'd had my outline down, but I couldn't come up with a title, and I felt like I needed that. Mm -hmm. And sitting in church one Sunday morning, um, suddenly that word came into my mind, I will not be defined. Mm -hmm. You know, you stop and think for a moment. Uh, what is it that defines you in life? Is it the things that you go through? Are it the people that you love? The, the things that you do? Is it the relationships that you have? Or is it the dreams that you've, you have within you? Is that what defines you? Well, if it, if, if, if it is, then what happens that all of a sudden one day, mm -hmm. your world, you're following after God. You see, the, the Word of God says in Psalms 37, the steps of a righteous man are ordered mm -hmm. of the Lord. So you're following and doing what God has called you to do. You're walking exactly where He wants you to be. And all of a sudden today, He's ordered tragedy. Hmm. And your world, instead of being you on top of it, it suddenly is on top of you. How do you overcome that? And it's done by you have to recognize what is it that defines you in your life. Mm -hmm. It's not those things. The subtitle is A Story of Transformation, Suspense, and Hope. And as I was getting to the end of your book and you were talking about being uh, wanted by the FBI, not as a criminal or anything like that, but being questioned by the FBI, you know, I was like sitting there waiting, hmm. what's going to happen, what's going to happen? Kind of pick up your story from there, tell us what happened and how that has produced the tenacity in you. I had um, developed the first fully digital video pro production company in the Midwest. God, the Spirit of God had given to me understanding about how to be able to do things I had had no formal training in. And uh, I had also built a Christian TV station and, and it had been sold uh, to another group, and um, I was building this station. We were going to produce family programming, and all of a sudden, one day, everything comes to a halt. Whenever I find out, the FBI comes to me and says, uh, the people that you have been working for as a consultant is actually a, a part of a syndicate defrauding the, the government, and we want you to be wired and go in and get the information for us. And if you will, we'll protect you. And I was 32 years of age, and I said, sure. <laughs> 
kind of naive to do that. <laughs> but I stepped up and said I would. And then all of a sudden, when I couldn't get the meeting, they said they're, they're on to you. They know what's going to go on. And we won't protect you. You're on your own. So suddenly imagine, again, I will not be defined. Mm. Suddenly imagine your world comes to an end. Right. Everything that you had spent your life, everything that you felt like God was doing in your heart and your life was now over. You could no longer talk to anyone you ever spoken to. You could no longer fellowship with anybody you'd had. Every church that you'd ever had relationship, every Christian you'd had relationship with, you can no longer have any conversation. Mm. You must reinvent who you are. You've got to disappear. And that's what I did. I simply in the middle of the night disappeared, recreated who I was, and then began the journey of how do you deal with that? Mm. Mm -hmm. You can no longer think the way you used to think. You can't allow yourself to go through life. But you see, it's not the process. It's not the, it's not, it's not the process that we go through. It's the purpose that we have in our mm -hmm. life. We have to understand how to manage in the gaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that point from A to B, when, Josh, when Joseph was, got the dream mm -hmm. to the, all the way that he's all the way there finally as the head, the prime minister, if you will, there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that gap? So from a practical standpoint, then, how did you redefine yourself? You came to that moment. You knew things had to change. Practically, what did you do? I began to, I, I, a gentleman said in church service one time, and you got to remember, you're a minister. Mm -hmm. You can identify as mm -hmm. a pastor, and suddenly you're not allowed to even consider yourself to ever think about it, being a pastor again. You can't even allow yourself wow. to preach mm -hmm. or think about wow. preaching. So I'm sitting there in church, and the man says, you're definitely of no use where you are. Not. So you'd better be of use where you are. So where you're not, you can't be. So where you are, mm -hmm. you have to be. Too often we allow our, our memories to be what it is that we focus on. Right. And memories are in the past. Right. Are we going to allow the past to precipitate our present? Are we going to allow that to rule who I am today? Or am I going to see myself through the eyes of God and understand that he has a process? And that can go for a negative situation or success. Like you can't allow success to define your future. No. Correct? That is correct. And what happens when we do that, when we kind of like let who we are, you know, become the spiritual identity. Well, you know, there's a great example of that in the Word of God mm -hmm. with David and Saul. Both of them were ordained by God, called to be king in Israel. Both of them were, or, were, were uh, anointed to that position. Both of them were raised. God put them in that position. But we have both of those men sinned. We see that Saul was destroyed, was a failure, went probably to hell. We see David, who was an adulterer, a murderer, and yet God, the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. What was the difference? David recognized that it wasn't about him. Mm -hmm. It was all about God. The assignment that God had given him, it was not him. It was the, God's assignment. It was about God. And so if we keep our focus proper, and that's what David did. He prayed, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I need you because it's not about me. It's about you. But in Saul's life, it was all about Saul. Indeed. Well, this is great teaching. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we'll have you back again on the show. To connect with Reverend Allen, go to KelsoMinistries.com or go to Harvest-TV.com for a link to his new project. It's called I Will Not Be Defined. We'll be right back with today's connections with Pastor Mark Lance. Here in Malawi in this area, there are no deep wells. These are shallow wells dug in the bottom of a dried out riverbed where they wait for water to rise up through the rocks below. Memory here, she's got about five gallons, 40 pounds of water that she'll carry on her head back to her home just to have uh, for her and her family. There's an opportunity for you to help sponsor a well so that in places like this, they have a deep water well nearby so they can have healthy water for a healthy life. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin 
vitamins, and you get Sol You See for a strong immune system. That's Mineral Concentrate, Omega-3, Vita Sprouts, and Sol You See. An incredible value for only $59.95. And if you act now, shipping is free. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from Making Healthy Choices. That's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com. What does it mean to use the Word of God as a spiritual weapon? You know, Paul wrote these words in Ephesians chapter 6. He said to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know, friend, there is nothing that is more powerful in your spiritual arsenal than the Word of God. But I need to tell you something. You can carry your Bible around all day long and still be defeated by the enemy. You can even put your Bible on your bedside table every night. You can read a chapter in it before you go to bed and still not live at the level of victory that you should. And here's why. Because when you look at the Word of God, there are two primary Greek words that are used to describe the Word of God. The first Greek word is logos, referring principally to the total inspired written word or the living word, Jesus Christ. The second Greek word that is used to translate the Word of God is rhema which refers to the spoken word. Rhema literally means an utterance or a speaking forth of the word of God. So when Paul writes that the sword of the spirit is the word of God, he doesn't use the word logos. He doesn't use the written word. He uses the word rhema. So we can look at the sword of the spirit. It's not the written word. It is the spoken word. It is your willingness to speak forth what God has said and use his word in our mouth as our, as our spiritual offensive weapon against the enemy. Romans chapter 10, take a look at this. Paul said, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. Listen, I believe the attack that you may be under right now, simply reading your Bible is not going to be enough. Simply knowing what the Bible says will not be what you need to overcome what the enemy is bringing against you. You are going to need the Holy Spirit to quicken a word from the Scripture within you so that you can speak out that word in the midst of your battle. And when you speak that word with power and you speak it with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that is the rhema word coming out of you. It's that spoken word that activates the power of the word. Today, I want you to be fully determined to activate the word of God in your life by speaking it out when the enemy comes against you. Because when you speak that word, you create movement in the environment of your life. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Listen, friend, today you are framing your world by the word that you speak. And I believe it's time to start using the word of God as your spiritual weapon in the midst of your battle. I invite you to join me again on Thursday. We're going to go deeper with this thought, but today... Rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit. Start speaking the word with authority. Get that rhema word from God. And when you speak that word, my friend, you will overcome the battle that you're in right now. And as always, we're standing with you in prayer in the midst of your battle. And it's always an honor to go to the, to, to the Holy Land where Brian Bush is standing by right now with your prayer request. Let's go and let's pray together. Brian. Well, thank you, Pastor Mark. It's that time of day where we'd like to pray for the requests that have come in. A theme seems to be about marriage, people working through stuff. So let's go to God from here, just across from the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. First up is Desiree. I have been married for 30 years and abused financially as well as verbally. After realizing all these bills, I may lose my home and I'm asking God to reconcile our marriage. And then there's Darren in Indiana. I don't know what to do. I've been married for 20 years and my wife wants a divorce. I know that it is only God who can fix this. And lastly, anonymously, a partner in faith has written in, please pray for these two marriages. The first is a marriage that took place a short time ago. And the second is a 12-year-old marriage where the husband needs to be delivered from tobacco and weed. Friends, I'm here to pray for you. We love you. Let's go to our Heavenly Father right now in prayer. 
Dear God, we thank you for marriage. We thank you that marriage is something that you created as a testament to your creation and to the commitment that you have to us. And we ask now for the reconciliation of Desiree's marriage, and we lift up Darren and ask for the preservation of the vows taken with his wife. And lastly, we pray for our partner in faith who wants to see a blessing on the recent marriage that has taken place and deliverance in the 12-year-old marriage from tobacco and weed. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, contact prayer line at any time. And you can contact us by calling 1-800-365-3732. Send in your prayer requests via email at prayer at lacy.com, worldharvest.com, and 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. And today we've been talking, Pastor Mark, about mm -hmm. using our weapons. Mm -hmm. um, that we don't have carnal weapons. The Bible tells us that our right. weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling mm -hmm. down of strongholds. So you can argue with someone if you like, but that's not a spiritual weapon. Mm -hmm. The weapon yeah, is the Word of God. We talked about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We talked about fasting and Brian Bush just talked about prayer, just powerful weapons to accomplish Absolutely. our spiritual you know, goals. And, and Jesus didn't even argue with the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, the enemy I referenced at the beginning, the enemy came and, and tempted him after his 40 day fast. And every time, what did Jesus do? It is he written. said, it is written. Yes. You can't debate. You can't have dialogue with the devil. You just quote the Word of God. That's your weapon. That's your power against that temptation. And when we dialogue with the devil, we end up like Eve. Absolutely. Sinning. Absolutely. He will deceive you. And, and we, and not to give credit to the devil, but I got to be mm -hmm. honest, we are no match in the flesh to what the enemy can bring. But in the spirit, we can do all things and you can do all things today if you just stand in the word. That's right. So stand in the word. And if you need us to come alongside to stand in the word with you, give us a call at prayer line. As you know, that number is 1-800-365-3732. We have some amazing intercessors who are standing by waiting to pray with you. And we'd like to also thank our guest today, the Reverend Alan Kelso. He'll join us again here on Harvest. And we look forward to you joining us again tomorrow. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.